you do not have enough practice solving Newton's second law problems and drawing good free body diagrams. That's all this video is going to be is solving some example problems. Here's a physics problem that I've blatantly stole from a textbook somewhere and I want you to try this problem out. Note that there is no friction but before you answer the questions A and B up here try and draw these free body diagrams here because they'll help you as you go about the problem. Pause it, see what you can do with those. With both objects combined we can simplify things a little bit and we can say that there's just one massive weight force going down that would normally be mg. But let's call this small m plus big M because they're let's combine their masses and we've got one massive normal force going up there. There's no friction. That tension in here, we're going to call that an internal force. So we're not going to draw that when they're combined. And we have an external force of 60 newtons. And we have an acceleration to the right. So there's no friction. It has to be accelerating because of this external force to the right. Now, if we look at A only, this force is not actually touching A because there's a tension here. So what we have is not that force, but we have probably... Maybe I'll make that smaller. Oops. We have a smaller force of tension. I have a smaller weight of mg, and I have a smaller normal force on A, and I have acceleration to the left, the same acceleration as I have here. Now for B, I have a larger force of mg. I have a larger force of the normal force on block B. And I have this force going this way. But then this tension that's pulling this 10 kilogram block to the right is also pulling this block to the left. And so these tensions are the same. But all of these free body diagrams have the same acceleration because these blocks are all connected. Before you can find the tension, it helps to know the acceleration. So it's best to use this joint free body diagram to set up Newton's second law in only one direction at a time. So we're going to choose the x direction because that's where the acceleration is happening. So we are going to have two masses that are accelerating together in the horizontal direction. The only force in the horizontal direction that's affecting both of them combined is that big 60 Newton force. There's a tension, but that's an internal force, so we're not going to look at it from this free body diagram. Now our combined masses, I think were 40 kilograms, because there's a 10 and a 30, and then we sign, we uh, solve for the acceleration. The acceleration then turns out to be 60 over 40, and that's our 1.5 meters per second squared. We can then use that as we come up here to find the tension. Because now, for just the small block only, again, Newton's second law in one direction, we only have one mass that we're concerned with, and we know that tension of the rope is the only thing on it. And we know that's got a mass of 10 kilograms, we now know the acceleration is 1.5, and we get our tension of 15 newtons. Now you could have, if you want to check yourself, you can do the same thing for this block, the big one. And we've got two forces on it now. We've got a positive 60 newton force, and I'm going to call the left the negative direction. So I'm going to say that we've got a negative tension of 15 because it's pulling backwards on the big block of 15 newtons and that's going to equal the 30 kilograms times that same 1.5 meters per second squared acceleration and we end up with 45 newtons equal to 45 newtons to confirm oops sorry that is equal to uh, that confirms that the tension of 15 newtons is correct those are equal. Here is another free body diagram problem. 
First of all, it's an awesome drawing. That goes without saying. Take a minute and read it. Now pause it and see if you can solve the free body diagram part only. Now, here we go. The first force you should always draw, let me change colors here, should be the weight. And that's usually going to be one of your largest forces. So I'm going to draw this one really big and I'm going to call that mg. Then I've got the normal force perpendicular to the ground which is still going up regardless of whatever crazy things the rocket thrusters are doing but it's not going to be as big as the weight anymore because of this upward force. So I'm going to draw the normal force a little bit smaller than the weight. I'm going to label it n. Then and I can keep in mind that this weight is going to be 250 times 10. It's going to be about 2,500 newtons. Now, I've got this rocket thruster force that they're aiming down one way, so the force must be going the opposite way at 30 degrees. But it's not going to be, it's only 360 newtons. It's nowhere near as big as this 2,500. So I'm just going to put this small at about... 30 degrees, and that is my uh, force of rocket. Then I've got small frictional force that's going to be going to the left, and I've got my acceleration, which is going this way. Now it sometimes is nice, because I know I'm going to have to work with components to go ahead and put those in there. So I'm going to say that I've got my force of rocket X component and I've got a small force of rocket Y components. I know I'm going to need to work with those a little bit later. Those are not new forces. I've just taken the force of the rocket and I've broken it down into these two for later use. Those aren't actually a new force on the diagram. Now that you've got the free body diagram, you no longer need the real picture uh, anymore. And let me have you try and find two things, the normal force and friction. Pause it, see if you can do it. Now the normal force, I'm just going to get it set up for you and let you finish things. I know that the sum of all forces in the y direction must equal zero, because there's no vertical acceleration. So I know my ups must equal my downs. So my ups are going to be a normal force plus the force of the rocket in the y direction, that's my y component, has to be balanced by mg. Now you should be able to then solve for the normal force here because you can break this component down and find it. You know mg. There you go. Now for friction, it's a little bit trickier because there's acceleration. But I know that the sum of the forces in my x direction is not equal to zero. It's equal to mass times the x acceleration. So I'm going to have a positive force of rocket x component minus, because it's going the other way, the force of friction, which is going to equal mass of the rocket sled times the acceleration of 0 0.9. Now, you can plug in what you know is the x component, plug in these values, and solve for f. There you go.